Bachelor Comic News, episode 166. I am one of your hosts, Chris, alongside, he just signed a deal with Spotify for $100. Mike. Hey. Yeah, so watch out, uh, whatever, <laughs> Joe Rogan. I got a, I got a C note in my hand. I got the watch out. Yeah, that's uh, it's interesting. Good for him, man, Joe Rogan. Yeah. I mean, as he's got a really, you know, he he's kind of he plays devil's advocate with his guests. He didn't, tries not to take a side. I think um, sometimes he gets Elon Musk to smoke a doobie on air. Like the guy's pretty cool, I guess. He also he started on Fear Factor. A lot of people forget. Do you remember Fear Factor? Yeah, that show was great. I loved that show growing up. I was like, I w- sometimes I had to look away, but it was crazy. Like, so I know like every podcast in the galaxy is talking about this, but like, it's such huge news. It's a hundred million dollars for a podcast, right? right. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> and yeah, it's I mean, well deserved. The dude puts on a good show and has great guests, and I just I I love listening to his show because. I mean, there was an episode about a guy who lives in, what was it, Alaska, in the middle of a, a forest, yeah. and just lives off of what's out there in this tiny cabin. Right. And it's like, I, I, I would never would have listened to that in my entire life, but I yeah. sat down for a day and listened to three hours of that guy talk, and it was fascinating. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, it's it, good on him for bringing stuff like that out and making it popular. So I, I think it's funny. They're like, well, how are they going to do video? They're like, Spotify's like, don't worry, we'll, we'll, we got it. We're going <laughs> to... We'll get it covered. It's like, we don't really know yet, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll get the video working. Yeah, it's it's cool, too, because you don't have to, like, go with the, the YouTube BS anymore. Which, I know. Um, so now he can actually, like, listen and discuss videos on the show, where before uh, he's like, oh, we can't have the volume on because YouTube will get us. Yeah, right. <laughs> they copyright everything. Yeah, so that's cool. Good for him. Mike, how was your uh, your Memorial Day? We didn't have a show last week. It was great. Got to see a couple friends, some family, some much needed R and R in, in in the sun. Man, it's kind of strange going outside after a few weeks, a few months. I don't even know. I can't I can't gauge the time in between. But yeah, it was uh, it was nice. It was a little relaxing. Got to read some comics because we finally got some comics out. Right? Yeah, that was kind of cool. Did you see yeah, all those you... friends from a safe six foot distance? Yes, six okay. feet away. Um, unless you're uh, handing off a beer to someone, then obviously it's, I mean, you got to come in close for that, I guess, but whatever <laughs> it happens. Um, just don't drink out of the same beer, just pour it in a cup, you know, got to, <laughs> yes. yeah, you got to be safe, <laughs> drink out of, cu- out of a cup. Don't share beer cans with your friends. <laughs> that's my, that's my pro tip for COVID. How about you? How was your, uh, how was your little relaxing weekend? Uh I mean, it's gotten nice, so outdoor work. <laughs> yeah. The indoor chores are the outdoor chores. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. To, a lot uh, of boring outdoor work. Getting stuff off roofs. Yeah. Getting the weed whacker out. Yep. You know, fun adult stuff. That's uh, But at least you're getting vitamin D while you're doing all of it now. See, that's the difference. Yeah, I'm told that's important all of a sudden. Yeah. You have a little bit more of a positive outlook on life while doing <laughs> You're like, oh, this isn't so bad. <laughs> Anyways, we don't have a we don't have an interview today. If you couldn't tell, um, we do have a little bit of good good news, um, which we could use a lot more of today. Uh, yeah, I mean, as far as TV shows, I saw that. Um, I, I haven't watched this yet. Have you watched all of Avatar: The Last Airbender? No, I never watched Avatar. I'm gonna. I think I watched like the first few episodes a long time ago. I think I'm gonna try again now that it's all on Netflix. Yeah. yeah, I've been seeing it. Um, my uh, stepsons both love that show, but I, I could never get into it. Well, I'm going to give it a shot. Um, finished Gurren Lagan, that anime on Netflix, where uh, it's like uh, they're like robots, but they start off the size of Gundams. It's only one season. They start off like the size of Gundams. If you ever watch Gundam Wing, like, you know, yeah. robots the size of like a building. Yeah. And then it progressively gets bigger. Then there's a robot the size of a city. <laughs> and then there's a robot the size of a planet. And I sort of got it. And, and they, they call it like, oh, super planet girl. And then they go, <laughs> then there's one, it gets to the size of galaxies. So now you have, get like, then they start hurling planets at each other. <laughs> I sort of got like throwing planets. And then 
The final fight is universe-sized robots. Universe. If they're, I, you can't get any bigger than that. They're like, what's going on? It's like, well, these are all the get. So now they're like, they got galaxies all around them. They're fighting. It was, it was so ridiculous. But it was awesome. I can't even, I can't even complain about it. Someone in Japan was just sitting back going, <laughs> what if we just keep making them bigger? <laughs> They'll fall like, for that shit. <laughs> They did, man. The fan, like <laughs> the kaiju fan base, man, it never gets. It's all. It, it's awesome. But I mean, there's some heartfelt yeah. moments. They actually kill one of the main characters off pretty early, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Like, you, you think like one of the guys is going to be the main character? They kill him off, and they like show how all the characters are dealing with his death. And I'm like, "This got. This is way too much. It got way too real." <laughs> I like texted a couple of my friends. I'm like, "What? What the fuck, guys? Like, I was trying to watch a giant robot show, and now I'm like." in tears right now what happened <laughs> it's like when everybody told you to watch inside out because it was a really good movie and then you realize it's just super depressing <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those moments anyways um did but I you, thought it was really good did you sign up for hbo max i did not have you signed up i did uh you get seven day free trial so i was like i'll see what it's all about yeah um so my week has been watching fresh prince of bel-air Oh my god, is that on there? It is on there. Oh my god, have they aged well? Um, <laughs> it's very nineties. Uh, nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I still enjoy it because it's just that show that I watched in reruns as a kid. Now I actually get to see like it in chronological order. Um, what else is on there that I really liked? Oh, it has the entire catalog of Looney Tunes. Back wow. to all the way back to season one, where it was black and white and almost Mickey Mouse esque. Wow. So I'm very interested to go back and watch some Looney Tunes because I do love me some Looney Tunes. Wow. Yeah, there's there's a lot of good stuff on there. There's a lot of stuff missing still. There's a lot of stuff that's confusing because like Doom Patrol's on there. Yeah, None of the other DC um, universe shows are on there. They announced season two of Dune Patrol, I think. I, yeah. Was it the end of summer or something that's coming out? July, maybe? So it's it's very confusing what's on there and what's not. But I feel like they held a lot of big stuff back just so they could have a release schedule. Right, yeah. Yeah, that's what it seems like. They're trying to delay things so they can have <clears throat> content. Yeah. Um, yeah, as we'll get to a little bit later in the show. But, uh, yeah. but we did get an announcement for Umbrella Academy, finally. Yes. Season two, July thirty first. Awesome. That's actually sooner than I expected, which is really cool. Yeah, I expected a lot more of a delay, especially with uh, this whole apocalypse happening. Um, I'm really excited. I love that first season. The first season was great. Uh, if you haven't yeah. watched it, watch it. It's uh, so I'm excited to see more, and I'm sure in the coming weeks and months we're going to see some uh, cool trailers come out. So let yeah. the hype train begin. Yeah, and I think now that Netflix knows that there's a huge fan base for it and how many people watched it, they're gonna they're really gonna make like pump up the budget for it. I don't know. Yeah. Definitely. It would make sense to do that. Uh Space Force came out Friday. I've watched a few episodes <clears throat> and Chris has watched a few episodes. I, I've been enjoying it. Um I didn't know what to expect. I thought it'd be more like the office where they're like interviewing people working for the Space Force. Um it's not like that at all. It's more of like uh like Brooklyn Nine Nine style, I guess, right? Where they're like, they're at. It's yeah. like you have characters at work, and they kind of just like follow Steve Carell around, <laughs> which is awesome because he's great. Yeah, and everything's kind of like pumped up a little bit, um, dialed up to eleven. If you they drop some f bobs, you know, Steve Carell dropping f bobs is kind of weird, you know, because you like <laughs> he, at first he's like quirky, like Michael Scott, and then he says fuck, and you're like what? <laughs> Whoa, Michael Scott! Whoa, watch it. That's <laughs> yeah, so that was pretty cool. Um, there and, and Chris and I talked about how they they kind of make there's political jokes, but they make fun of like both sides. Like they make fun of uh, Trump, obviously, because the show is called Space Force, and it's a it's came out of his mouth. Um, <laughs> but the also uh, <laughs> they the people sitting on like who are who are they pitching their budget to? Like the um, some uh, like senators, right? Yeah, Congressional Budget Committee. And you have, like, the one center that's, like, a flat earther. <laughs> yeah. And then you have the other person who's uh, AOC. Clearly, she's AOC. And, like, 
I almost thought it was her for a second. Like the way she talks and what she uses her hands, like, can you tell me what? And I was like, wow, like, and her tone of voice. I'm like, that is so good. <laughs> um, and it's, I, I think John Malkovich's character is really refreshing in all of it. Like he's like the, he's kind of like with all this bullshit going on, he's like the audience of like, okay, I'm just more grounded and like have a sense about things. Like you all are just weird. I don't know. Yeah. I, Obviously, I haven't finished it. I want to see more of the uh, the other generals because yeah. it's like all the actors that play the generals for the different uh, branches are all yeah. guys I really enjoy. Right, but they're all comedians. Yeah, yeah. Like it's what well, it's Putty. Um, yeah. I can't remember his real name. He'll always be Putty. Um, is it John John French or no Stuart oh, French? Think, is that the guy who does the voice? Um, he does the voice for Venture Brothers. Uh, the what's he? No, that, that's Putty. That's Putty. That's Putty. Yeah. yeah, he's also the Tick. The Tick, right? The yeah. Tick. That's it. Yeah. No, Stuart French is in um, fuck Office Space. Yeah, Office Space. He's the two chicks at one time guy. Oh, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so yeah, I want to see more of them. Um, I do in like I do like yeah, they do take a lot of like pot shots at Trump and Melania. Um, the funny part I, is. All- the generals, how they treat each other, though. Like, the Coast Guard, they don't give any of the budget to. They're like, get out of here, Coast Guard! Like, yeah. They're like, you're not even in this meeting! <laughs> like, oh, come on! <laughs> so good. But yeah, I do enjoy, like, the when they're in D.C. and they're talking to all different Congress people. Like, they just, they make everybody out to be, like, just a kind of an extreme nutcase. Yeah. And yeah, it's just, it's really good. Watch it. I think, uh, Anybody can find the humor in everything they're doing, um, even if you are rah rah about one side. I just think that the humor there is perfect for what it is. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. It was, it was a uh, nice uh, thing for them to release on Friday and be like, "Oh yeah, this is out." Um, yeah, so I'm probably going to finish that. It's only ten episodes; they're thirty minutes each. So, yeah, that's that's like not even a binge. <laughs> that's nothing. That's like a you know, that's like one night. So <laughs> pretty easy to watch. Uh, this is kind of surprising news. Ruby Rose, yes, the Batwoman herself, leaves the show Batwoman. So now Batwoman does not have a Batwoman. Uh, the role is going to be recast and continue with season two. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, I to be honest, I think Ruby Rose is a terrible actress. Um, I All I've ever seen her in was the John Wick movie where she doesn't have to speak. She's like a deaf assassin, and there's a reason for that, because every time she speaks, I'm like, wow, she is acting really hard. <laughs> I guess she was in Orange is the New Black. I don't know if people really liked yeah. her in that, right? Uh, I she was care. awful in that, too. I don't understand why oh, people okay. liked her in that. Okay. Well, then I don't I don't really care for her. I didn't care for her. Well, I didn't like the show at all, anyways. I mean, I watched the first episode, and like I said, they, they focused too much on, like, the past where I just want to see Batwoman in a costume swinging around Gotham, you know, I, yeah. Um, she said there was personal reasons for it. So whatever. And she has, she's allowed to have whatever oh, yeah. is going on. Yeah, sure. Um, it is very confusing. Uh, I mean, I have some feelings that I don't want to get into about their recasting, but, uh, most of all, it's just a, I, I did not like Ruby Rose to begin with as an actress. I don't know her as a person, so this is not a shot at her as a person. Um, and it will be kind of nice to see someone different take that role and possibly better. We'll see. But, uh, yeah, strange. I, I, I can't think of another time this has happened to, like, the lead character of a show like this. Right, and then they're just going to continue on, like... Yeah. Uh, it's it's kind of like, you know, Dark Knight, where they replace... Um, Rachel. <laughs> Where's <Yeah>. Rachel? <laughs> no, the other actress from the last movie. Where is she? <laughs> well, it's <laughs> like, you know, it happens all the time in, like, sitcoms where it's just, like, the sister has to get replaced. And right. It's, like, four seasons in. Like, who's that? Oh, that's the yeah. sister. She looks a little different, but she's still blonde. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, it'll be interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, so. I think what they should have just replaced her with Gilbert Gottfried, but that's just my personal <laughs> casting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gotham. <laughs> Let him have it. 
Well, like, we'll keep I, an eye out to see uh, who uh, is going to take it, that over. I don't think it'll be Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> that's that's the Batwoman show. I want. Um, yeah. So as far as TV shows, yeah, are you watching anything else? No, we, I mean, like we talked about Fresh Prince. Um, oh, yeah. I haven't really gotten anything else. The uh, so before we get into movie news, I did see Netflix released a. I, I'm probably gonna watch it tonight. They released a documentary, so I'm I'm surprised I didn't hear you talk about it yet. But oh, the Epstein about, documentary. The, Eps, the Epstein documentary. I didn't even I, know that was coming out. I do want to watch that. I didn't know yeah. either. Um, and they're but, like interviewing his neighbor. It was pretty interesting. Like it, it like. I was wondering, like, who can they interview? I mean, Epstein's dead, and they're like, they're talking to his neighbor, <laughs> like, of one of his mansions. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit! He's like, yeah, what kind of guy do you think he was? And I'm like, oh shit! <laughs> I so I don't talk about much on the show, but like, um, my my mood, especially with uh, my depression, like, flows with a lot of what's going on around me. So, like, you know that in my personal life, I tend to be much more openly political. And there's times where I just don't want to talk about it based on what's going on around me because it's just like my mood swings. And not to get too much into what's going on right now, but with the city like 10 miles away from me burning down right now, I just like didn't have much of an interest to watch the uh, documentary about the child rapist dude who was sending rich people to pedophile islands. Right. It's kind of bad taste. So like, I I understand that completely. So it was, yes, I am interested. I do want to watch it. I just, I'll probably wait till the city um, that I am from is not burning to the ground. (laughs) But I, that's, you know, I, I made the decision last night. I'm like, what should I watch? And those are the two things. And I'm like, I like had I was hovering over the FC thing and I'm like I really need some I need some like Steve Carell uh, stupid humor in my life right now was like the decision that I made. I that was the exact decision for me. I was just like Space Force or Jeff Epstein. I was like I need to laugh right now. Yeah. Like I just I need to laugh. Yeah, I was going back and forth and they had the joke about like uh, the R and D budget of like a thousand dollars on a button and he like launches the rocket. I'm like okay, that was pretty funny. I'm gonna put it on. I was like that sold me. Uh, but anyways, uh, some interesting movie news. The uh, the release the Snyder Cut hashtag hashtag release the Snyder Cut all over the internet. All the all the big you know everyone, oh Henry Cavill's for the Snyder Cut. It's like all he did was all he did was put out an Instagram hashtag release the Snyder Cut. Like these the the actors and actresses aren't doing anything. They're just like oh they're such an advocate for the Snyder Cut. It's like they're just typing a hashtag on Twitter. But anyways. Uh, HBO is like, how can we profit off this? You know, we can't shoot movies right now. We can't release movies to theaters because the theaters are closed. Oh, we have this thing, HBO Max, and we need people to subscribe. <laughs> oh, there's this large amount of people signing a petition for the Snyder Cut. <laughs> hmm, would that boost our numbers? How much? How many people? Thousands of people. Oh my God. Well, uh, let's make an exclusive content on HBO Max. So, yes, we're finally getting the Snyder Cut. Um, what, whether it's a money grab or not, I'm still, I'm still kind of intrigued. I want to watch it for sure. I don't know. Yeah. I'll still watch it because it's a, what if scenario for me? Um, I don't expect that this is also going to change the DC extended universe and we're going to go down that path again. I, that, that ship has sailed. Um, you're just going to enjoy the what if scenario that exists right now. Um, the the thing that's frustrating about this whole thing is now I'm seeing like hashtag release the name a director and cut. So like people are going nuts over the David Ayer cut of Suicide Squad, and I'm just like, first of all, <laughs> Suicide Squad was a pile of shit. Nobody yeah. wants to see more of it. Let's stop. But yep. second, it's just like, can you enjoy the fact that we got the Snyder Cut for two seconds? Can we right. all enjoy that for a minute? Yeah, like, just enjoy that for a minute. That, like, he acknowledged that it existed and that we actually have it. Yeah. So we'll uh, we'll see how long that little thing goes on. Because I've been seeing more and more of, like, the release the what cut. Um, on that note, I want to start my petition to release the Burton cut of the original Batman movie. Please. <laughs> uh, how how did how did we get this far with nobody, you know, without someone at least asking for a signing a petition? There might be a petition out there. I don't know. I haven't I haven't looked. But um, yeah. So I, I mean, will I get HBO Max for it? Yeah. If that's the only way to see it, I'll probably do a seven day trial. <laughs> uh, 
Um, that's just, you know, the, I don't, I don't know. I have a lot of streaming services right now. This is interesting. Uh, the beloved Henry Cavill, you know, he's, uh, he's in the Witcher universe now. He's in Mission Impossible. He's taking your franchises by storm. Uh, but he will be back as Superman for future DC films. Currently, he's only planning to make cameos. So I don't know what happened there. But he's back. I mean, I don't. He wasn't the bad part about Superman, right? I mean, he, I thought he was a great Superman. Uh, no, like I, especially for the world they built, I thought he was really good for the, yeah. the part. You can have a problem with Superman killing somebody, and I can not only understand, but I could have a conversation about why that's wrong. Mm-hmm. But I thought for the movie that they made and the Superman they were trying to create, I thought he was really great. Um, and he wasn't even the bad part. It's like I said with uh, Batman v Superman. I don't think the two leads were the bad part of that movie. Right. Um, Jesse Eisenberg was the bad. Part. He's one of the many bad parts of that movie. <laughs> he just pops up like a like like I don't know like one of those like just a fly that you want to squish. You just like oh he's back, damn it. Yeah. So I, I'm down for it, and it seems like the when they explained it, um, somebody said that he's basically going to be the Mark Ruffalo of the DC universe where he'll yeah. just like show up in random movies and be a part yeah. of the story. That's cool. Awesome. I'm down for that. I'm down. Yeah. Um, and maybe we'll get man of steel too sometime. Maybe. And I, I don't know. After, after all this conversation, I kind of just want to watch man of steel tonight. It happens every, every so often. I just, that movie, I like that movie. I don't know. We'll get in the whole debate. Like, Oh, man of steel, blah, blah, blah. But, Oh. Yeah, there's there's only a few things about that movie I don't like. One, I just feel like Superman would have tried to redirect that fight away from Metropolis. Right. And two, him killing Zod. Spoilers for a super old movie. Um, <laughs> other than that, that was a really good movie. And even then, it's just like, okay, they're destroying Metropolis. It looks Maybe. cool, so I'm down with it. Yeah, yeah, like... <laughs> Come on, let's be honest. Him punching someone like through the air and like not seeing any of that like Dragon Ball Z level destruction. You know what I mean? At least with Dragon Ball Z, they're like out in the mountains, so they're like destroying mountains and like. They... <laughs> you know, oh man, my favorite hiking spot got d- demolished yesterday. But at least we still have our buildings and homes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, yeah. Anyways, long story short, Henry Cavill's back, so we can enjoy him hopefully as Superman. Yay. Yeah, feature. Um, yeah, so let's jump to the comic book news, huh? Comics. So uh, DC has added to their digital first program the release of Deceased Hope at World's End, written by Tom Taylor. It's a 14-part series. It's going to lead into Deceased Dead Planet. So that's pretty cool. Be checking that out. Yeah, so after, I think it was issue four of the original Deceased, there's a time jump. Mm-hmm. This is going to tell the story in between that time jump. Um, And then if anyone read Deceased, the ending is the ending and is pretty obvious based on the name of the second series, Dead Planet. Um, (laughs) Are we going to get to a point where it like, do you think we're going to get to a point where it's going to be like Black Lantern, Necron style stuff happening? I don't know. I, I do. I, they they obviously wanted Deceased to be based around um, Darkseid because there was a path for DC where Darkseid was going to be the big bad for the movie universe. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of like how for Marvel for a while, and I know it still happens today, but Marvel for a while, everything was Infinity Stone or Thanos yeah. related. Yep. So I think they made a mistake in doing DCs that way that it had to be like the anti-life equation, equation that created of, it. Yeah, instead of being like a Green Lantern thing. Um, that being said, it's still a great series. I still really liked it. But the, yeah, that can only go so far before it's just like, okay, you can't kind of do the wacky stuff that Marvel Zombies did down the line. Right. Um, but I'm still looking forward to it. And But I don't know if you're going to get that or not. It, that's a tough one to well, predict we got, how that's going to go. We got Tom Taylor writing it, so I'm sure it'll be enjoyable either way. Oh yeah, 100. Yep. percent But I yeah, I picked this up because it was a good a stealth launch, um, but I haven't read it yet. Yeah, um, DC is launching a digital only Batman series. The main the main from the main series creative team. 
Uh, it's exclusively on Instagram. <laughs> I had to laugh at that. Starting uh, June 9th. So, I mean, <laughs> you really have no excuse not to read it, right? I mean, it's on Instagram. It's, I have an excuse not to read it. Well, okay. It's about punchlines, so I don't care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry, but okay, so I forget the name of the, the guys we had in the show uh, from the UK, but they had this idea like two years ago, and they were they were prepping to do this, and then I read this story, and I thought about them. Um, they were the guys that did the one-page comics. Right, they were talking about making an yeah. Instagram that was one-page comics, yeah. Yeah. Damn, they were ahead of the time. That was like a couple years ago. I remember those yeah. guys. Uh, Mango, Mango and... Uh, was it Yanny? I want to say one of them was Emmanuel, because I still follow them online, but I just haven't talked to them forever. Yeah, they won that competition in England. Yeah. Uh, but so, yeah, yeah. We cool, knew somebody well, who was ahead of the curve on this. Yeah, I had, I, just, I had a DC. Like, it was two guys like that won a comic competition that had better uh, business insight <laughs> than all of DC Comics. They're just starting to come, come to the idea of it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Though. I mean, I, whatever. It's a free comic. I'll probably it'll take me like thirty seconds to read while I'm on Instagram. I'm sure I'll see it. <laughs> it's better than seeing all that other stupid shit that DC puts on their Instagram of like these like thirty second videos. Like what they'll go on like Instagram Live and be like these are the books coming out today, and they'll just like start flipping through the pages. And I'm like, you guys are spoiling all the everybody's weekly books right now. Like, what do you get out of here? Like, what are you doing? At least like interview the artists or the writers of the books this week. You know what I mean? Like, why can't you just get a a clip like acknowledging yeah. the people that are making this stuff anyways come on jim lee i didn't know that superman was gonna win again <laughs> yeah come on jim lee <laughs> i didn't expect his pecs to be that big <laughs> anyways uh, I, i'm gonna add my rant there uh dc has announced they'll be releasing its own comics catalog much like previous catalog it'll be digitally only digital only and called dc connect that's huge Digital only means that, like, you don't have to go to your comic shop to grab it. You know, that's, like, that's the whole point of previews. you got to walk in to physically grab the previews. So you have that, like, relationship or conversation with your local comic book store, you would think. So um, I, so you know. this news popped up after I grabbed my previews catalog. And I um, I'd flipped through my previews catalog. Because this previews catalog is two months and one because of all this craziness going on. Yep. And I flipped through and I did all my stuff and then I finished and I was like, there's no DC in here. Oh. And then this news popped up two days later. So I'm just like, so the whole back and forth between DC and Diamond is getting real. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. They, um, they used to have a separate. Well, they did the same thing Marvel did. Marvel always had the insert, right? Yes. And then it was like, oh, now DC's got to have their insert. And it's like, then you get your previews catalog. It's got these floppy inserts in the middle of it. And now they're just like, well, we'll just pull the insert. That's crazy. Yeah. That was the nice part about this month is there was no insert. They rushed it out to get it to retailers. Everything is in one book. And I loved it that way. That's convenient. Like, it, it needs to stay that way. For, I don't know, for me personally, I know why they do it because technically they're supposed to, you and I have been. Um, spoiled for a long time because those previous catalogs actually cost money, right? Um, and you can just buy the Marvel insert, just buy the DC insert, and that's why they do it is for like the Marvel fans who just want to get the Marvel insert. Um, but for me, who doesn't pay for, it, <laughs> I'm yeah. just like, can this all be in one book, please? Me, who's special, that doesn't <laughs> pay for it because I'm special. <laughs> I don't want all these damn catalogs. Can't all be special, but yeah. we should definitely cater to my specialty. Yeah, right. Just just so everybody, the moral of the story for this episode is Chris is special, everyone. The moral of the story is anyone who runs a comic shop out there, you shouldn't be charging people for a previous catalog. You should take the hit because people are going to order more comics out of them. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so one of the comics they could be ordering is the new Mega Man series, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's written by AJ Marchesello and Marcus Reinhardt. What an awesome last name. Man, like like the character from Overwatch. And art by Stefano Simeone. Awesome. Uh, do you read the Mega Man comics? Uh, yeah, I have the complete collection of the Archie Mega Man series. 
So this um, six-issue series is going to be based on the new cartoon series by Man of Action Entertainment. I haven't watched that. but um, I don't think it's come out yet. Oh, okay. I could be wrong. But, yeah, so I have all the Archie ones. I have all the manga. Yeah. I'll probably pick this up because it's Mega Man. I love Mega Man, even though the cartoon doesn't look that good. But Oh, damn. No, but then again, I can't get my drawer. I have the old cartoon that was garbage too, and I watch yeah. it all the time. So <laughs> it's like that's like the Zelda cartoon. Oh boy, yeah, the old, yeah, those are. Uh, I, I just uh, love me some Mega Man six issues. Sure, let's do it. Well, I have a friend that collects them. It doesn't even read them just for the just for the covers and stuff. So interesting. Yeah, he just he's just a big Mega Man fan. So that'll happen. You know what we have this week? We actually read comics. We get to talk about those comics. I'm excited about this. I got two we haven't weeks. been able to do this. This is like actually like weekly weekly polls that you read. It's happening. So I I had to catch up on Just League 44 um, because that came out last week. So I read 44 and 45. Uh, really quick, Chris talked about 44. There's a awesome epic battle with all these. Uh, mythical creatures, you know, like the um, the giant Hydra and the uh, like Greek Greek mythology creatures, um, and you know they're helping out Aquaman. Come to find out, Spectre shows up at the end, uh, and they talk about like, oh, all the evil and hatred or resentment is being released in the world, and it's gonna, you know, they have to they have to end it, or how can they stop it? Um, they find out that. And issue 45, they find out that the Spectre and Jim Corrigan have kind of split, right? And Jim Corrigan was the um, the vessel for the Spectre. So he, he was the one that had to, like, house all this vengeance and, uh, and judgment on people. And now it's kind of been let loose into the world because Corrigan's like, I'm out. I can't. <laughs> He's like, I can't handle this anymore. Um Basically, the world's going to be engulfed in like a rage. So, what is what do they do? The league's like, well, we got to go to Themyscira to, uh, you know, they we need their help. So they get there, and the Amazons are pissed because now Diana showed up to the doorstep of like five dudes this time. After, you know, it, it always goes so well when they bring dudes to Themyscira. You know, the one rule is like no men allowed, and she keeps breaking that rule. So, we have um, one rule, Diana. One rule, Diana. <laughs> You know what, Steve Trevor, now there's more of them. You know, there's like five. Now they got Batman. One's dressed like a bat. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we'll see where that goes. I mean, I'm really liking it. I think Venditti understands how to write a a, uh, um, a Justice League book. He, he gives enough time to each of the characters to where it feels like a, a team book. Yeah, and I like that the, the first half of this book, which was the all the Justice League members fighting each other, yeah, because of the vengeance of uh, Spectre. Yep, I think a lot of writers would have like delved on that for maybe a full issue or two, right? And it, even for how long it was, I was kind of like, okay, okay, I get it. Yeah, me too. Um, I was like, okay, yeah, we don't need them fighting each other for a whole issue. Yeah, and when it ended, I was very happy because I was like, okay, it, it, we, he got the point across that like the spirit of vengeance is doing this. They're fighting each other. They're mad at each other. This is what's happening, and then we get the backstory. And now it seems like what they're going to hell or something in the next issue. So yeah, they're gonna river sticks or whatever, and then go to hell. Yeah, so not my favorite Justice League ever, but it's just a fun story, especially after the the world shattering events that was the the Snyder. The multiverse um, is crumbling. Yeah, yeah, just to have like a personal little story that just involves the mascara and the Spectre. Yep. Um. So this is the last issue of Basketball Heads number seven. Uh, Joe Hill, Leah Max on the art. There was this this book be, uh, in an entirety. Like read this book as a trade for sure. Um, I think that's most of Joe Hill's writing is intended to be read as a trade. I would say, not that it wasn't a good story, but the end the end was awesome. So uh, basketball heads we left off. We basically, you know, the the girl's boyfriend has a summer job as a cop. We find out that he's an undercover FBI agent trying to expose the very corrupt uh, police force of the small town. So he's being held on a boat with the police chief because he doesn't know where the evidence is being held. So he's, you know, the police chief knows he's a rat for the FBI. He's got him on his boat. 
uh, the girlfriend has killed like several of the uh, um, the bad goons, the like you know the good cop bad cops that are like corrupt cops. You know, chop their heads off with this axe and they're talking heads. So there's this big fight with them on the boat, and then she realizes in all of this, you know, she the police chief's like laying there dying. She like cuts him open with the axe, and then she realizes her boyfriend's a piece of shit too. She he was like. They talk about the girl that like committed suicide and they found this money that they kept. And he was like, oh, well, she was on her way out. She was a delinquent. She deserved to die. She was she was going to off herself anyways. And so like the girlfriend's sitting there like, holy shit, my this guy that I was dating is actually a terrible. He's just as bad as the guys that I killed. So she chops his head off. <laughs> um, it's it's awesome. So like she's on the side of the road, like it's all resolved. You know, she's walking down. the. It, it's raining out. And the secretary for the police chief, an older woman, pulls over the side of the road, like, and she's, like, looking over the bridge, and the old lady assumes she's going to, like, kill herself. And she's like, listen, dump whatever you got in that basket over the bridge, and you just get in the car, we'll get out of here. And the old lady makes a comment about, like, oh, don't worry, the police, those people won't be around for long. And she's like, what do you mean? She's like, oh, as she's giving her a ride out of town, she's like, I was, the, I was an FBI informant for the, for the police chief. Uh, and them being corrupt. So it wasn't the boyfriend at all. The boyfriend was just a piece of shit. <laughs> um, and it actually ended up being the police's secretary, the old, you know, sweet old lady that nobody would suspect. She was the actually the FBI informant. It was an awesome twist ending from Joe Hill. Um, it was really cool. Yeah, so, I mean, it was a cool, like, murder mystery twist with a little bit of uh, Supernatural. Suicide Squad number five, another great issue. Uh, this is the Tom Taylor Suicide Squad. Uh, the end of the last issue, they catch Boomerang. Um, so the beginning of this issue, they or they start to fight Boomerang. They catch Captain Boomerang. Uh, there's a really funny um, page in this issue where, so Deadshot's standing there, and you have this new guy Locke in charge of Suicide Squad, and he's basically like, okay, now that you captured Captain Boomerang, you need to kill him. And Deadshot's like, like at this moment as the reader, you're like, there's no way. Deadshot would actually kill Boomerang, like with all the shit they've been through together in in the original Suicide Squad. Um, so what happens is Locke is in this like uh, he's in this uh, special like uh, I don't know what you call it like force field, and Deadshot shoots someone to take out the force field, and then he goes, "Ha, oh, you missed." And he's like, no, I took out the force field. And then he turns his wrist gun on the lock. And there's this shot of him blowing his head off. But they can't show it. They can't show it. So it says, like, property of DC Comics, like a postage stamp, like, over where his head's exploding. And it's an awesome page. And, like, it got a great chuckle out of me. I'm like, holy shit. And it, like, it was like, it's almost like you could see this happening in the new Suicide Squad movie. Mm -hmm. It was like, it was really, it was a very cinematic moment. I'm like, this is awesome. So the rest of the issue is like, they have their own suicide squad. Now they've gone rogue. Um, they have captain boomerang as part of them, which is like captain boomerang is the favorite. Let's be honest. Um, and, and now they find out the guy that Locke was working for, he was being employed by Ted cord. So I don't know what's going to happen in the next issue, but, um, they, Ted cord was behind all of it. He's like, you don't understand why I was funding this. And, and he kind of like he makes a comment that he didn't really know, like he knew that Locke had ways of handling things, like shitty ways of like dealing with people and you know managing people. But they're like, we're coming for you next. So, dude, Ted Cord, well, I don't know what's going on, but it's pretty cool to see uh, Blue Beetle, the original Blue Beetle, being uh, part of the part of the fray here. So that was a good issue. And then we got Rogue Planet number one by Mister Cullen Bunn. I know you read that too, so I did indeed. Uh, who was that published by? That was an image, right? Uh, Oni Press. Oni Press, that's right. Um, yeah, so uh, sci-fi horror slash thriller. Um, these, I guess they're like they're almost. It almost reminds me of um, not Alien, but there's that movie where they're like they seek out. Um, you know, wreckages, like, ship wreckages. And it's almost, it almost reminds me of, like, Cowboy Bebop, where they're, like, bounty hunters or, like, um, almost like smugglers, right? They're, there's these groups of people that have, like, you know, scientists and um, they have, like, a, a ragtag group of people that all have their focus on what they do, like the biologist and 
Um, but they find this planet that's giving us giving off a, a beacon, right? What well, actually is a distress signal with all these ships crashed, and we find out there's like a weird, I don't know, I don't like it's almost like body horror, but like this giant <laughs> monster on the planet that dude. The the first scene of the book, I mean, is a child sacrifice, right? It's like this mm-hmm. alien race, like this nice like love w- loving and uh, very touching moment of this like alien with his child that he like cuts his throat and sacrifices him to this giant alien god. You're like, what the fuck? Um, I really enjoyed the first issue, though. I don't know. I did, too. Um, my my comparison was kind of was Dead Space. Dead Space, um, yeah. If anyone played that game, I really, like, it seemed like a group that was going out and trying to get uh, um, scraps and all this other stuff and went to this planet thinking it was going to have some materials they needed. And then yep. this almost supernatural zombie-ish uh, entity uh, started attacking them. Really good. Um, Andy McDonald's art was fantastic in this yeah, issue. Very, very disturbing art, right? That's, yeah. that's one thing. Like, yeah. And he had a lot of really like big, deep details within the art that I really liked. So I, I recommend it. Um, I do not read Oni Press stuff all that often, but this one's definitely uh, going to be one of their bigger ones. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'll start with the new stuff. Venom number 25. It was the end of the Venom Island uh, story and like how Eddie got off the island and everything that happened. And then he goes to the Avengers and tells them all about Null and what's been happening. Uh, it was a good issue. It was the whole issue was based around that idea of he's sitting down with somebody telling them what's happened over the past year of his life and you end up finding out it's the Avengers and then he explains who Null is and says that this is going to be a problem. So obviously there's going to be some sort of big event uh, in the near future that's going to involve the Avengers. But I really liked it. It was a good issue and it was just fun to have um, it was fun to have new comics back all together. Mm-hmm. But it's for me it was fun to have event or a uh, Marvel comics back because even the last couple of weeks I've gotten slow drabs of like DC stuff, but just uh, to remember how much I love Marvel comics was uh, a lot of fun. And then let's see, DC's uh, number three that came out last week. It was DC's Unkillables number three. <laughs> I like this issue because it's you know the group of villains we have they're trying to get these orphans to some sort of sanctuary and cheetah is one of the the villains in this group that needs to be remembered and then um wonder woman zombie wonder woman shows up and they fight and that was a really cool fight and we ended up finding out that basically poison ivy has a sanctuary on earth where she can keep all the zombies out and uh keep like uh resources and everything going um if you like the first deceased this is a cool three issue series um, that just kind of filled in the gaps, and I'm sure that some of this is going to lead up to what's happening in the the new series. Um, Avengers number 33. This was the start of a new story, and I really liked it for the fact that it's a Moon Knight centric story. So Moon Knight goes to um, Kung Lao to face off against Iron Fist, and ends up taking the Iron Fist from him. And then goes around to different heroes and just like basically steals their abilities. So he ends up taking the uh, Doctor Strange's sorcerer powers. He steals the Hell Charger from Ghost Rider and um, takes down uh, Black Panther. And then he ends up stealing the hammer from Thor and explaining to him what his hammer really is. It was very interesting because, like, this isn't Moon Knight, <laughs> but mm-hmm. there's something weird going on. So basically, Kanchu is trying to get him to take all these powers and contract them into some sort of necklace that he has to help save the universe. So he's kind of the, the villain of the story, but he's working with Kanchu to try to bring about uh, a resolution to a problem that's coming to Earth. So 
Very interesting story, and I just I love Moon Knight. I I think he's a great character if done right, and I was, it was cool to see him as a part of an Avengers story. Um, and then the last print book I have was Star Wars Adventures: The Clone Wars Battle Tales. This is part of the Star Wars Adventure series that IDW does, mm-hmm. and it's actually written by Michael Moresi, who we've I believe we've had on the show. I know I've talked to him. It's hard to remember who we've had in the show anymore. I know. Um, yeah, I know. It's been so many people. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, this is if you like Clone Wars, this is a a five issue series. It's gonna be weekly. That's just Clone Wars stories. It's you know, Anakin and Obi Wan and the different clones and they're doing Clone Wars stuff. Um I really liked it. The art's a little it's different from the series, so it takes getting used to, but I think it's a really cool book and it's worth reading. Um, and then my digital reads real quick. Uh, I've been catching up on some of the DC, um, you know, digital daily stuff that they've been putting out. So I did read Aquaman, some more Aquaman deep dives, Swamp Thing, New Roots, um, both still really good. I mean, the the Swamp Thing story Mark Russell's doing, he's been killing it throughout the entire series. And the Aquaman book, it's just Aquaman superhero stuff, so I just really like it for that reason. Just that it's, it's simple and it's just kind of a palate cleanser for part of the reasons I love Aquaman. Um, I did try out the Batman Gotham Knights, starting with number four, because I found out that Mark Russell is writing it now. Oh. <laughs> and uh, he's now like three issues in, but I read the first one, which was number four. And it's Bruce kind of tricking these his fellow billionaires into admitting to their crimes and then coming back as Batman to beat them up and get them arrested. <laughs> and then they end up calling the Joker to like help them out of jail. And it's a really crazy story, but it was a lot of fun and it just it fits with the Mark Russell yeah style. I'll have to check it out. Um I definitely recommend it. Um I picked up a new book, a new indie book called The Green Man, Roots of Time. Mm. Um, I really liked it. it. The art reminds me of like old school Swamp Thing when like Alan Moore was doing it. If you know like the art style he had for that yep. book. Yeah. Um, and it's all about these gods at the end of the end of the reign of man. So the last human dies and these gods get together and figure out what to do moving forward with uh, the Earth. And they end up deciding that they need to find this entity known as the Green Man, who is responsible for the changing of the changing of um, seasons. And he ends up dying every year, coming back during the spring, and brings about the rebirth of nature, the whole uh, cycle of uh, nature that we all know. And... There's a few twists in there and everything, but I thought it was a really cool story that has just like a lot of mythology behind it. Um, it seems like it has a lot of mythology based around Native American mythology. I'd have to look a little bit further into it, but that's where I get because all the the gods have a animal um, that they can turn into, oh. like one one's a deer, one's a so on and so forth. So I really like that. Um. <laughs> So then I have I have Transmits Pilots in uh, Volume 1 that I finished. Um, I felt very similar to this that I did to Lock and Key. I, I enjoyed it, but I don't really want to jump out and just immediately read or, uh, Volume 2. Okay. Um, it's a very strange story with a lead character that I don't like. <laughs> like the lead character is kind of a dick. Mm-hmm. And... I see what he's doing, but it's definitely a fish out of water story about a man who's trying to find the the truth in a world full of lies. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll definitely continue reading it, but it's it it's not like the boys where I just want to jump right into issue or volume two and volume three. Right. Uh, <laughs> and then my long list ends with a early review copy of Join the Future number two. Um, which was Zach Kaplan's book that he released. Yeah. Um, I really liked issue two. It, it's been a couple of months, obviously, since we had issue one, so I had to go back and read issue one to remember where the story began. But uh, I like that he focuses a little bit more on the, the city um, that 
the city of the future that's basically a socialist utopia and mm-hmm. some of the people behind it who believe that um this is the only way to properly take care of humanity and i liked how some of the ideologies that he's bringing into conflict with each other he's not seeming to take as much of a stance that one is better than the other but that ideologies the problem with ideologies is the people behind them right. and it was a really it was a really great story um they end up coming in taking the land trying to terraform it to better the people uh that were living there and the lead character here is the daughter of the sheriff from town who uh tries to go out on her own and find somebody to help her get revenge uh through any means necessary and I definitely recommend checking it out. Issue 2 will be out this Wednesday. So, Mike, that is everything I read this week. Where can people find you on the internet? They can find me at Fortress Ricker on Twitter. Where can they find you and or the show? Well, they can find me at Fortress Chris on Twitter or at ForgeComicNews.com where everything we do is right there on that handy-dandy website. You can also find me at ChrisRunt.com. That's C-H-R-I-S-R-U-N-D-T dot com. Um... Remember, everybody, to give us a five-star review on the podcatchers. Like, subscribe, share on the YouTube. And I finally got my uh, order from Public, and the yeah. Force Combat News shirts look, look awesome. Look at that. That thing's hot. Look at that. That is a nice item right there. Good so call. everybody go check those out. They came out really nice, and the uh, shirt's nice and soft, too, so that's nice. Oh, nice. Soft material. Good stuff. So everybody, thank you so much for listening, and we will see you all next week. <laughs>